This video is going to show you how to create an assembly pattern of sheet metal components using an X generative design model as a support and later imagine and shape. We'll start by creating two widgets on a dashboard, one X generative design and one X design. You can move these into place and then we'll start a new component in X design. Select which collaborative space that component will be created and change the name. We'll start by making a sketch. So select a plane that will support that sketch, zoom out, and draw a line. We can create a constraint on this line to give it a precise length. From there, we'll add additional line segments to create a profile that will later be extruded in X Design. Click on the green check mark to validate this sketch and exit the sketch. You'll see X Design automatically expands the support plane to the scale of the geometry. And now we'll make an extrude surface. You can see within the dialog box that you can make a surface, a thin surface, or a solid volume. When you make this extrude surface, you want to make sure that you select the sketch from the tree and not just one of the segments from the 3D. If you select the segment, X Design is going to make an extrude of just one segment from your sketch and not the entire polyline. Now we'll make another sketch, and this sketch is going to be just of points, and these points are then going to be used in X-Generative Design to create a spline. Unfortunately, in X-Design, there is no spline command, so that's why we'll be using X-Generative Design to create that spline. We'll save that model, and now we'll do a search and open that model in X-Generative Design. You'll see that we have the exact same model in X-Generative Design. First, we'll get the sub-elements of the second sketch that we created in X-Design to extract the vertices from that sketch, and then we can generate a spline through those points. We'll extrude that spline to be the same size of the extruded surface from the X-Design model in the YZ direction. So that was 5 meters on one side and 5 meters on the other side. Next, we're going to make a point grid on the surface and we're going to extract the integer value that controls the number of points in both the U and the V direction. These surfaces are going to get panelized with sheet metal panels in the rich client. So what we want to do now is create planes to support those panels. The planes are going to be tangent to the surface using the point grid that we just created as the origin of each one of those planes. The panels are going to be rectangular, so we're going to put rectangles on each one of these planes. In order to make those rectangles, we need to make an upper right-hand point for each rectangle and a lower left-hand point for each rectangle. We'll put placeholder dimensions in there for those points to start because we'll modify them later once we open up the graph. So the second point on plane, and again the x and the y dimension are going to be opposite of the previous point, minus 500 millimeters here. Now we can make a rectangle using two points and a plane as support. Confirm that, and there's our rectangles. Finally, we're going to put a point on our plane again in order to make a line that will serve as an axis about which we will rotate these rectangles to add another design element to this model. Now we rotate those rectangles ar around that line. And again, we'll extract that rotation value so that it can be accessed later from the controllers panel. From here, we'll fill that rectangle. It's always good practice to name your geometry so that it's easier to access later and easier to modify, easier to remember what you've done in the past. And now we'll do a little cleanup. We'll hide some of the support geometry that we don't need to see, including those original rectangles, the planes, save the document, and now we'll open the graph and do some, some cleanup. 
We're going to move that extruded surface that we created in X Generative Design from where it's been placed towards the back of the graph up towards the beginning because we want to add logic so we can switch between the X Design surface and the X Generative Design surface. We're going to do that by using the Select node. The Select node behaves similar to an if else statement, whereas you can add multiple values to the select node, and then an integer value is going to select which one of those values is going to be output from this node. So now when we replace all of the downflow nodes with the select node, we can swap between the original X design surface or the X generative design smooth surface, and our panelization will update. Because that select integer control parameter has been identified and expressed in the graph, it will be accessible from the rich client so that we can continue to explore design variation from the rich client as well. Next, we want to add logic to control the size of our panels. We want our panels to update based on the size of the input surface so that they extend essentially from edge to edge and don't overlap. So to do that, we're going to do a measurement. We're going to measure between the UV points in both the U and the V direction. We'll subtract 10 millimeters from that value so that we know that there is a, a slight gap between panels. However, this is only going to give us the value of the panel size in either the U or the V direction, not both. So we're going to need to do this same thing in the opposite direction. To do that, we're going to transpose the point grid, and we're going to get item, which will give us the first list. And then we're going to get item number two, which is going to give us the second point in that first list of the two-dimensional array. Now we can measure the distance between that second point and the original origin point. We'll again minus 10 millimeters from that distance so that we have another gap between panels, and now we can use that value along with the other value to control the size of our panels. Finally, because we're measuring the distance between the points and these panels are actually going to span between the points, we need to divide this dimension by two before we connect it to our nodes. So divide two will get connected to point one. On the y value, divide one will be connected to point one in the x value, and then we'll connect those divides to point two. However, we're getting an error because that means one point is sitting on top of the other. We need to remember to add a formula to point two so these values are negative. Now there's a little update problem with my, with my model. I need to deactivate and activate rectangle to bring everything back up, and you can see that the panels have been resized based on the geometry of that input surface. I'll do a little graph cleanup. And now test the functionality. If I switch the surface input to be acting on the smooth surface, you see that the panels updated and the sizes are different. The last thing we're going to do in X generative design is output a few lines that represent the calculations that are happening inside of the graph so that we can attach the length of each edge of the panel to the sheet metal panel that we're going to model in the rich client. So the workaround to do this in X generative design currently is to create a line with a particular length and then publish that geometry. When we get into the rich client, we'll access the length of that line through a formula to define driving parameters of our panel. Uh, this is uh, something that should change in the future, but in uh, the first release of X Generative Design, this is the workaround to connect our X Generative Design model to a uh, sheet metal model. We've added axis systems at the centroid of each one of these panels that are going to be used for our assembly pattern and we save this part, and now we will open the rich client. I'm using the AEC roles, uh, particularly the architectural detail designer role in this example, to open the application building engineering 3D design. You see the model? 
in the rich client I search for this part I open this model and I have access to the parameters that were identified in X generative design here I can change the surface selector parameter to move between one panel one surface and the other next I'm going to make a curtain wall product and that will be the location where I place all of my sheet metal panels and then I'm going to make a new part for my sheet metal panel I'm going to open this part in the sheet metal application and I'll make a sketch in the sketcher I will create a few constraints that will define the height and width of my panel and I'll make sure that the panel is centered on my sketch I'll do that by adding a few formulas so that the the overall width is twice that of the distance between the vertical and the horizontal axes of my sketch you do that by right-clicking inside a parameter value and saying edit formula now I'm going to make two parameters that control the height and width of this panel so these are two parameters of type length and I've defined a certain values 750 millimeters for the height and 1100 millimeters for the width and now I'm going to go back into my sketch double click on one of those constraints right click edit formula double click on the parameter in the tree and you see the width is now updated I'll do the same thing to the height parameter the height constraint and you see because I linked the mid pan the mid lengths that they've updated as well now I'll make a new sheet metal panel so the first I'll make a wall and it's going to ask me if I want to make that in a part body yes I do I have no choice in the sheet metal application next I'm going to make a few bends these are walls that are vertically bent up you can see I can control the angle of these bends there are additional controls uh, inside that panel to do K factor to do the notching that you see there to do the bend radius etc the sheet metal application also has this nice unfold command so that you can create unfolded views for fabrication I'll name this and save this part you can see I've already made a curtain wall assembly and I'm going to drag my X generative design model into that assembly and then I'm going to drag my metal panel into that assembly you'll see my metal panel was modeled at the origin of the part using the X Y and Z local axis system within that part and what I want to do is using assembly design create an engineering constraint between this panel and the axis systems created in X generative design but first I want to be sure that I link the height and width parameters of my sheet metal panel to the outputs of my X generative design lines that define the height and width of my panels that are computed based on the input surface geometry so first I'm going to create two parameters inside my X generative design model one is a panel height and one is a panel length then I'm going to link the value of those parameters to the length of the lines that are output from X generative design next I'm going to go into the metal panel part that I just modeled and those panel width and panel height parameters that I identified that I linked to the sketch that define the geometry of my sheet metal panel will be associated directly to the parameters that I just created inside my X generative design model this way we are linking all of the geometry from part to part back to the lines that were created in X generative design now the size of my sheet metal panel will update dynamically based on the surface geometry from the X generative design model I'll make an engineering connection now to position my sheet metal panel to the first axis system in X generative design it's very important when creating the engineering connection to position the appropriate component and to make sure that you reset the value of that component once I have my engineering connection made I can make an assembly pattern using all of the axis systems that are created in X generative design and this is going to make a pattern of reference parts all identical to the original metal panel that we modeled just a few minutes ago I can rotate around and you see that these are all identical panels and if I change my surface selector the X generative design pattern is going to update as will 
those output parameters that define the height and width of every panel, which will control then the geometry of my original panel. You see everything is updated. So now we can take this a bit further and show how this model can be extended to any type of surface. Here we're going to make an imagine and shape surface. Unfortunately, this application is not in the architectural detail designer role. Imagine and shape is in the concept building designer role. So this is mixing two roles in one. The concept building designers for conceptual modeling of buildings uh, with parametric and freeform surfaces. Now using the replace command, we're going to replace the xDesign extruded surface that was based on the original sketch with this imagine and shape surface. Now when we run an update, all of those panels are going to relink to this imagine and shape surface. And you see all of the panels have updated in size as well. Now we'll edit the transparency so that it's easier to see how we manipulate this geometry. And when we manipulate the surface, the model will update. The panels will update. The engineering constraint will update. The panel geometry will update. And the assembly pattern will update because this is one linked associative hierarchical parametric model. We can change the number of panels. We can change the gaps between panels. And because we're working within a part here, if we want the assembly pattern and the other parts, like the sheet metal part, to function, we need to make sure that we double click on the curtain wall assembly and update the model at the level of the assembly. And then everything will update. Now you see we can at any time go back into the metal panel. We'll launch the sheet metal application. And again, we can show the unfold of those panels. And because this is one panel that's been patterned in this assembly however many times, when we unfold one panel, it's going to unfold all panels. And this is just one example of a digital continuity process from a conceptual model using X-Generative Design through a detailed fabrication level model with a sheet metal application inserted into an assembly so that you can harness the power of CATIA to build these detailed models, these detailed assemblies for fabrication only on the 3D Experience platform. If you've liked this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already, and let us know in the comments below if you have any questions or would like more detailed information on anything that you saw in this video.